So we're gonna clean out my refrigerator today and do a refrigerator vegetable slush to dehydrate. And let me show you how I do it. Hi, it's Darcy from the Purposeful Pantry. There are tons of produce packages and uh, things that are stuffed in the back of the refrigerator that we purchased for uh, the first of the year to get cooking. And then we had a family emergency that meant that I wasn't home cooking, I wasn't doing anything with that produce, and it needs to get used up. So I'm gonna show you a way that you can quickly dehydrate vegetables uh, to get ready for vegetable powder, because that's ultimately where this is gonna go, that you don't have to sit and blanch everything and cut everything up. I'm gonna show you a trick to get it done fast. Okay, what I'm going to be doing is taking all of my vegetables and I'm just going to put them into my bowl of my food processor and I'm just going to let it grind. I'm not getting it down to a liquid base, but I'm getting it down to really small pieces to make it dry a lot faster. Um, you could do it many ways. You could use a shredding tool on here if you wanted to. You could use your blender, like if you had a big high speed blender, uh, that would work too. You can get this down to a puree if you want, like get it really ground down. I'm just not going to worry about that. Uh, and so we're going to go with that way. You're doing broccoli carrots, lots of celery, uh, and some zucchini, and I think I'm going to throw an onion in there as well. So here I go. By the way, doing this with your, your celery uh, is a great way to have really small pieces of celery that you're going to add to foods later down the road that a lot of people complain that when you rehydrate celery, it's tough and it's stringy and they don't like it. But if you still want that flavor, you can still, you can do it this way, get it in tiny pieces and you still have all that celery flavor with the bulk without the big pieces that are harder to dehydrate and get into your meals. Okay, for this last part, it's okay if that paper from the onion doesn't cut up because it's, it's just gonna dry and crumble with the rest of it anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this off with the onion. And I had to throw away some of the other celery because it really had gone bad and I'm not gonna put it in here. You don't want, it's one thing to put food in that uh, that is oilty, uh, but it's another thing that if you won't eat it, then you don't wanna dry it and we wouldn't eat that. So I just went ahead and left it for composting or if you need to throw it in the trash because you don't have the ability to compost that's okay because sometimes stuff happens and you just have to do that kind of thing all right we're done and what we now have is this giant bowl of vegetable mix that you can use um, some people might actually use this as a beginning of a, like maybe a vegetable bouillon as a soup starter, just like it is. Um, but we're going to dry it and store it and use this for vegetable powder down the way. But I could add this to stuff that I'm baking with too. I mean, cooking with too. Uh, if I wanted to throw this into like shepherd's pie, I could throw some of that in there. If I wanted to uh, bulk up a soup or maybe throw a little handful of it into my eggs for more, you know, for more stuff in the eggs, you could do that as well. So here is, it's beautiful, isn't it? It is so, so pretty. Pretty. but yeah we're gonna dry this okay for this next section as we do our vegetables I'm gonna show you a couple of ways that you can do this you're gonna need something that is a solid sheet if I tried to use just my mesh on the vegetables they will fall through and end up all at the bottom of my uh, dehydrator so you can use silicone sheets that are made for uh, any dehydrator bright kitchen is the brand that creates these things for almost every size of dehydrator out there I also will be using uh, some this is a brand called Homey, which is a Teflon coated uh, fruit leather sheet that does not uh, have a problem with the heat that we use in a dehydrator. It's low enough that the Teflon isn't an issue. This is also newer generation Teflon than the stuff from the 80s, but that's your choice. You can use this or not. I like it because I can I can buy the 14 by 14 sheets, use it in my Excalibur or in my Tentray Kasori, or I can cut that down for any other size machine I have. And then the last thing you can use is parchment paper. Um, parchment paper is great. You can reuse it a few times. Um, and you can cut this down for whatever you need. You can use regular um, parchment or you can use unbleached parchment. Whatever works for you, for your home, uh, make this work. So I'm just gonna take this with my hands, just gonna get messy and start spreading this out on trays. This, like the greens, will shrink incredibly while it dries. But what you don't wanna do is just pack it on so tight that air can't get in there to dry it to help it shrink. So I'm not gonna pack these like a solid mass but we are gonna put a lot on. Okay, so I'm looking at just trying to pat this out to get it evenly distributed. Seeing a little gap in here is what I wanna see. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm looking for a bit of a gap. And yeah, if you need to wear gloves, wear gloves. It's gonna get a little bit messy.
All right, after about 11 hours, this is fully dry. When I came in here at the six hour mark, uh, I noticed that all the edges of all the trays are dry and the middle is not. So all I did was go through here with my fingers and fluff it up and make sure that it wasn't sticking and gave it a little extra space in order to dry fully. All right, just like that. It's beautiful stuff, isn't that pretty? And it smells so good. So let's get to what's happening next with storage, conditioning, powdering, uh, and rehydrating to use in food. If you can see, I mentioned earlier about parchment paper and how it can absorb moisture compared to fruit leather sheets. So if you can see the bottom of this, I don't know if you can see how wavy it is and the way that it's so see-through. It has absorbed a lot of the moisture that was in the uh, vegetables as we dry them. So it could be a little, uh, sometimes things will stick to parchment paper because of that. So you have to be a little careful with it. So this isn't just easily coming off. See, even when I'm folding it, trying to get it to move it, it's not coming off easily. So you will have to go through and just pry at it a bit. Get it all off. Now, with all foods, when you're going to decide if it is actually dry or not, you need to give it about five to 10 minutes to rest and cool off before you test because sugars stay warm uh, in the warmth. And so they're going to still be a little pliable, even natural sugars that are in things, you know, just like your vegetables. So make sure that you give it a little time to test, to cool off before you test. This is one reason I do not like these silicone trays. I know a lot of people like them and it can get fruit leather off easily, but when I'm trying to pull off something like this, more of it sticks, it feels like, than it actually comes off. They are not my favorite. So a couple of things that you can do uh, is to pull things off after you throw this in the freezer, just like put the whole tray in the freezer if you have that kind of space. And freezing can help remove a lot of the, uh, the pieces. You can use a scraping tool if you're very gentle because you don't want to break into the silicone. You don't want to tear into it. But you can use like a really sharp uh, spatula or you can use um, a scraper tool that might help you get that off. But for some, from projects like this or for, for onions, I almost always know that I'm going to have a little loss just because it won't come off the tray easily which is why I don't use them very often, but I really needed them for this project because I didn't have enough. So here is the silicone um, mesh that I use. Okay, what I've got here is some water that I just got um, that we're going to look at what this looks like when it rehydrates. Now, when I said earlier, if you wanted an, an instant soup kind of mixture that you could just put this into some hot water, let it, let it soak for about 10 minutes, that's going to require that you have cooked this vegetable ahead of time. Uh, and that way, all you're doing is just rehydrating and warming up. The mixture as it stands now still needs to be cooked. So uh, you could still do soup with this and have small bits of vegetables in a soup, but you'd want to put it over a simmer uh, pot full of broth and some seasonings that you like and maybe some freeze-dried meat. Uh, that would give you... But here we go. We're just going to set this in water. I hope you can see this just like this. And we're going to let this soak. Uh, it will create its own little bit of broth as some of the, the vegetables uh, release their vitamins and minerals and coloring and stuff into the water. So you don't want to just toss this water. You want to use it in whatever you're making. All right, so let's get the rest of this stored. Okay, now we're going to work at powdering this so that you can see what happens when you make vegetable powder from this. 
So could I have done the individual pieces and done them so that I have individual ingredients to use in meals down the road? Yes, you could have done that. I could have just sliced up the zucchini and the squash. I could have done the celery. I could have done the carrots separately. I mean, I could have done them all as individual ingredients, but I find that I use so much vegetable powder. This makes more sense for me for doing powder because I can just blend a bunch of it together, uh, have a bunch of it ready, can powder it when I need to, can toss a handful of this into spaghetti. Um, I can do all of those kind of things to make this easier and faster for me to use, but I find this is a very versatile and useful product for me. I get more vegetables into our family by doing this. Okay, so here we go with the powder. There is vegetable powder. Now you can see the carrots, of all things, didn't grind down as much because they weren't uh, blanched, they aren't as soft. I could do this again and just put it through one more time and it will get down a little softer. The thing that I find though is on almost everything that I use this for, as far as regular meals, this won't matter. This will rehydrate and then get soft and you won't even notice it in a meal. Uh, it just won't be noticeable, but you can certainly grind this fat finer. I just don't need to take the, the time to do it right now. Um, some, like if you use a Vitamix, it's going to powder this stuff up like crazy, except I don't tend to use it for doing very large quantities because powders don't store as long as whole does. So the more you process, oops, sorry, the more you process and cut something down, the faster it starts to degrade. So I try not to do too much at one time so that I'm left with a uh, powder that starts to lose its nutrients. Try to keep it as whole as possible. Although this is not whole, it is still better to store than this. In the long term you think about these like spices spices will lose their flavor after a while and that's what's going to happen here too nutrients and flavor are going to disappear if you do too much at one time okay so how do we use this now that you've got all this ready okay i don't know if that you can see this very well and how it looks on the the camera versus what it's like in real life this is already all very very soft it rehydrated very quickly it okay so now you're going to say, so you did all that, but how are you going to use it? Well, one, you can take a handful of this blend and throw it into your spaghetti sauce and it adds all those extra nutrients without the added texture because the pieces are so small, you can't really taste them. Okay. So it'll go well in there. Just like if you would to add a handful of dried zucchini or a handful of, you know, dried carrots, whatever you'd like to put in normally, this works the same way. The other way after we've powdered, I, one tablespoon of this powder is about one cup of fresh vegetables. So that is a cup of fresh vegetables. So you could add that to anything as well. And because it's powder, uh, you can incorporate it better without necessarily having that flavor of anything. There's no chance that you have any kind of textural issues because it blends in so well that you don't have to worry about it. This is something that I will add to eggs. I will add this to smoothies. I will add this to any kind of like savory dish I make. I mean, any kind of savory dish, I always put some of this in there because it's a way to add extra nutrients to everything. Now, as far as cooking it goes, this is the simple way that I did water. It's just water and it was cold water at that. You can see how this is all rehydrated. It's all back up to uh, about the size it was when it went in. No, not quite the size it was when it went in. It's a little smaller, but it's, fully soft. Now, if I had used hot water here, it would cook this in the time that it soaks. So you could simmer this in uh, a stovetop with a bunch of broth that you want and maybe a some seasonings that you like, and then uh, add a little meat if you'd like to do that. And then you have a vegetable soup. Now, granted, this is pretty dense as far as, you know, you pick up a spoonful and you get a big chunk of vegetables like this. That's because there's very little water. You would want to add that into a much larger stock pot. Uh, this was about, I don't know, I just put a bunch of a handful of it in there. So this is probably two or three cups of, you know, at least two or three cups of fresh vegetables in that soup right there. Now you could also put this in a thermos uh, with hot water and add your meat and over time it will cook in your thermos so you can have 30 minutes of it getting ready that way. But if you want an actual instant cup so that you pour hot water into it, you let it sit for five minutes and it's ready to eat, you would want to have cooked this first and then you would have that instant, okay? 
So can you make meals in a jar with this? You absolutely can. Uh, if you want to add a layer of vegetables like this into it, and then a layer of maybe freeze dried chicken, uh, a layer of bouillon, uh, maybe some other chunkier pieces of vegetables so that you have some small pieces and some chunky. If you want to add some noodles of some kind or rice, you can do that as well. So this will work in meals in a jar as well too. Now some, so somebody's going to ask, can you make vegetable bouillon? Let me show you how that would work. So I'm going to take about half a tablespoon, put it into this little pint jar. Now, of course, you'd want some other seasonings like salt and pepper and, you know, other flavorings that you might use. What you have there is basically vegetable stock. Now you are going to see the little floaty bits because it doesn't dissolve this. This is still what you have is as it infuses this water with all the vitamins and the flavors and the nutrients that are coming from those vegetables, the fiber is what's left over and it's here at the bottom. And eventually it will soften up even more and it will blend a little more, but it will never fully dissolve. So if you're trying to do something that requires a perfectly clear um, stock, then what you would want to do is strain this in something ahead of time and then you would still have that stock. So this is basically like an infused stock. So for storage, this is going to last about a year. Your powder is going to last from six to nine months. You may get a little longer from both of them depending on your storage. Okay, so there you go. Now if you want to see some more ideas about how to use green powder in the same fashion, check out this video right here where I kind of walk you through all of the things about green powders. And until I'll see you again next time, happy dehydrating.